Temperatures this summer are at an all-time high historically across the globe, which can make it difficult to care for your plant babies. Botanical artist and owner of Chicago Bloom, Two Bloom, joins us now to share tips to keep your plants healthy and vibrant. And we're talking indoor and outdoor. Yes, both indoor and outdoor because they're both significant uh, green spaces that we, you know, decorate to. Um, and I imagine our also because now we've probably turned up the air conditioning mm -hmm. on the inside, oh, so yeah. that's drying out the air. Dehumidifying. Yeah. And I've basically ignored everything outside because we've gotten so much rain and so much heat. I'm like, oh, look, it's like a greenhouse. Yes. <laughs> and up and up until the temperature gets to a certain point, which we'll get to at that point. Okay. Because then it becomes muggy and it causes other issues. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. So okay. let's start indoor. Yeah. So indoor, I, I always talk about bottom watering, and, and it's a really simple task. Uh, you have these plant saucers or any type of, like, plastic uh, to-go container. Uh -huh. I love to upcycle stuff because I hate, uh, you know, just having to go out to buy stuff unnecessarily. Um, so... This is a this is a, a plant saucer that I we use uh, we use quite often actually in our store. You can fill the bottom with gravel, and this okay. is like uh, you can do this consistently throughout the year, and then you can fill it with water. Let me ask you this: Is mm -hmm. it better to use filtered water or something Great like that? Great question. I personally don't think filtered water is appropriate because it really it's 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 a phenomenon that. During the um, the pandemic, everybody was talking about filtered water, you know, re reverse osmosis for plants. Listen, plants grow outside. Yeah, that's water from the rain does not get filtered. It has nutrients in it. Just use regular water. Okay, okay, very okay, good. Okay. Um, so, anyways, so bottom watering is this. So, Amy, if you can hand that to me, yep. you'll set the plant in there. Now, what this does is it's through capillary action. It actually pulls the water up. It's like a bounty towel paper effect. Mm -hmm. So it pulls the water up and it slowly actually. Um, per the plant's need. Oh. It'll slowly saturate that, and we'll get back to this a little bit in a few minutes to see if it, it actually works uh, with this variety. It depends on the soil as well, but it'll soak the water up, and that's the most thorough way to actually water all your plants. So if you have a sink, if you have a tub, you're going on vacation, this is the best way to water all your plants before vacation because mm. you know that that root ball, and you'll feel the weight of the plant afterwards, uh, will okay. be thoroughly saturated with water. Okay. So that's considered bottom watering, okay? okay. What about the, you have a lot of those pots that have the lip on the bottom with holes. Can you just pour yes. it in there? You can pour it in there, but like literally it only holds about yeah, what? A quarter Good inch point. or half yeah. an inch. Yeah. So this is really like, if you have like a really, really bad wilty or drying plant, which we all have that peace lily we got yeah. from that funeral, <laughs> right? We do. Yep. You know, Auntie so and so's funeral, you want to save that peace lily. It's always, it's so the peace lily is so dramatic, right? It is. When she needs water, she's like, oh, I'm dying. Yes. I'm dying. Yes. You know? yes. So you drop it in a saucer full of water, like as deep as you can, and just like let that plant float. Sometimes you'll see the plant will like flop over. Uh -huh. That's fine. Just, it's in a, it, it, as long as it's in a vestibule or container that holds that soil, it'll soak, it's it, up. The, it'll soak it up. That's okay. the best way to water. Okay. okay. Right. Right. So that's know. bottom watering. Bottom watering. Yep. Misting. That's misting. something else. Actually, yeah. before we get to misting, let me show you. There's also these new, uh, really creative self watering pots. Oh. So it's a container within a container. Oh, so oh, check yeah. this out. Oh, it's oh, kind of like your own Yeah, it has like, these are like kind of like shoestrings, actually. Mm, yeah. And before they developed these, I was actually doing shoe. I was, I was cutting my mom's shoestrings, shoe strings, <laughs> right? Um, and just putting them under containers. Now, this container does not have a drainage hole, but it has a water reservoir. Okay. Uh -huh. And you can actually see the yeah. level of the water yeah. outside. Yeah. So this is a great way to actually water uh, your plants. And I, I say I use, the, I use these a lot outdoors. Now, um, the reason why is because, especially with flowering or fruiting plants, yeah. it only takes one dry cycle for it to collapse all the flowers. And I love my hot peppers. Yes, me too. So if you let this plant collapse to the point where it's wilty, you've actually lost like quite a few weeks of uh, fruit producing flowers. Interesting, oh. okay. So it's so really- you can bottom water your outdoor plants. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Now the only caution with that is when you have the amount of rain that we've had yesterday, you really have to be judicious to go outside and dump all that water out because it can also rot if it just sits there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Too. But this does provide you with weeks of like stress-free, non like stress about like watering. Okay. okay. So okay. Um, now let's talk about misting your plants, okay? Um, these are great misters that
that we actually all, all, all um, carry in the store. Literally one pump, it provides like a fine mist, which you'll see. Oh, it's a continuous Ooh. mist. It's a continuous I love mist. That. Now, your indoor plants will love you because they, especially in AC, get dehumidified, right? So it's, it's great to do this, I'd say like once a week. Don't go too crazy. Some people do it literally every day. Now, the problem with everything is that when you do too much of anything, <laughs> uh -huh. it's bad, right? Yeah. So when you when you over miss your plants, sometimes fungal and bacteria can actually grow on the mm, leaves okay. and destroy. So if you see a uh, plant typically that has like um, yellow spots on the leaves, yeah. it could be several reasons, but one of the main reason is actually a, 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 a bacteria that actually eats away at the leaves because it has too much moisture. Okay. So remember to miss your plants, but also mm -hmm. it's nice to like let them dry out in between, just like watering. Okay, okay. gotcha. Okay. Right. okay. That includes your bamboo, and, and I know bamboo is sitting in water, mm -hmm. but literally misting the leaves will provide them with a nice clean like foliage, um, okay. always consistently. Okay, now, and you say don't fertilize and feed in high heat? Yeah, don't fertilize and feed in, feed in high heat because a lot of fertilizer has um, salts in it. And what does salt do? Just like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when I take that Dehydrates. corona with the salt around the rim, mm -hmm. like it dries me out. So. Um, you want to avoid fertilizing your plants during high heat or when your plants are stressed. Okay. When stressed plants, what, a lot of times people think when they see a plant that's like wilty or yellowing, they need to either repot the plant, water the plant, or fertilize the plant. All three of those are not Bad always ideas. their first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a stressed plant literally could be rotting, mm -hmm. so you have to check the soil to see if it's moist. And, and a stress plant can also be multiple reasons. But when you fertilize a stress plant, it does not have the ability to actually absorb all those um, oh, nutrients. nutrients. Okay. It actually ends up burning the roots in the plants and killing it further. Okay, oh. okay, good oh, to know. Don't okay. check my one at home. Now, okay. of course, we all have wave petunias in our yes. house. I love wave petunia because they are the champions in heat. Uh, but again, a lot of them towards the end of July, end up being four feet long with mm -hmm. two leaves and one bloom, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So throughout the, the high heat growing season, and this is what we were gonna um, touch base on before, you will have high humidity that actually begins to make a muggy environment towards the center of the plant. Now, if you peel the, the center of this, this pot out, you'll start to see a lot of the, the deadheads yep, mm -hmm. are actually like, it, it's starting to like rot towards the center. So I always say, just like us, good airflow is actually best. So okay. you go through towards the center of your plant and you trim out some of the dead or dying foliage yeah. and you create better airflow for your containers. If you have like literally a long or leggy growth with your wave petunias, feel free to go in and actually cut every other um, stem out. And what that will do is actually it'll send out new growth which will send you out a new series of blooms within um, those hot summer climates. Oh. All right, and you so, say don't water, they set for in the morning? Water yes. in the morning. So, you can water at any point of the day, but I suggest it's best to water in the morning. And, and because later on in the day, we've all had those notorious slugs that come out, yeah, right? Yeah. They love water. So when you create a wet environment um, for plants at the end of the night where it actually weighs down plants in their at soil surface, you're gonna find out that the Japanese beetles, the slugs, everything will begin to eat your plants. So ah. it's always good to water actually earlier on the day because when uh, light and, and of course the heat helps your plants dry out, Again, better, better airflow. Now, if you're like me and you work a ton of hours yeah. <laughs> and the only time you can water is at like 8 p.m. when you get home, all you gotta do is try to water by water, like by if you're watering your hanging basket, mm -hmm. lift it up and just water at the soil yep. surface. Mm -hmm. Or if you're watering in ground, just take your nozzle and just water and just spray the soil. soil. Not don't not don't douse everything. Oh, okay, okay. good enough. Yep. The great watering advice. sticks, can you do the watering sticks? The watering stuff? sticks are great, but they're inconsistent. Okay. So I haven't found one yet. I might develop one. Oh, but okay, good. As if I don't have enough to do right. already. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you so much. Shop chicagobloom.com is where you can get more information, see these beautiful plants, and come check out his store. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, too. too.